بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الدعاء والسلاح المؤمن دعاء is a weapon for a believer in English they say if you don't ask you don't get if we don't ask Allah من لم يسأل الله يغضب عليه Ya, a person will get the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because one is asking the creation and not asking the creator. أُطِيَتْ أُمَّتِي ثَلَاثًا لَمْ تُطَى إِلَّا الْأَنْبِيَاءِ My ummah has been given three things, such three things which were special gifts to Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. كان الله إذا بعث النبي قال أدعني أستجب لك When Allah sent a Nabi, Allah gave him the first speciality Ask me, I will grant you وقال لهذه الأمة أدعوني أستجب لكم Allah told us أمة that same thing which he told أنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام Ask me and I will accept ما جعل عليك في الدين من حرج الله سبحانه وتعالى تول النبي when he was sent it الله سبحانه وتعالى had not put any hardship or difficulty in your deen الله said the same thing to this ummah وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج and thirdly when الله sent the نبي جعله شهيدا على قومه Allah made the Nabi a witness against his people. وَجَعَلَ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ And Allah had made this Ummah a testimony against the other Ummahs. So one of the salient features of the three was that when we make a dua and we ask Allah, then Allah will accept أَنْتُمْ فُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ we need to become beggars in front of Allah. We need to turn to Allah. We need to beg from Allah. Speaking about begging, they say there was a beggar who went to a rich person for some money. So he said, sir, I have asked for money. I have begged for money. I have cried for money. I have also driven for money. So the man asked him, oh young man, why haven't you worked for money? See, you've done so much. Why? Haven't you worked for money? So the beggar said, I'm doing it alphabetically. I have not yet reached W. So even the beggars of the dunya have understood there's a system and they're following that system and they organized in their begging and they organized in the answers. What should be the condition in Kayfiyat for the people of Iman? Since we have this weapon, we need to understand what are those factors which will prevent the dua being accepted. Let me explain number one, Aklul Haram, eating Haram, drinking Haram, wearing Haram. That comes in a, in a mention in a narration, Arajul Yudhilu Safar, Ash'ath Akhbar Yamuddu Yadayhi Ila Sama. That a person is even traveling for deen, whether he's in a path of Allah, whether he's in Hajj, whether he's in Umrah. And in this state, his condition becomes depleted, where his hair is disheveled. And in that condition, he spreads his hands in front of Allah and he says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Allah, my Allah, wa atmat'amuhu haram, wa mashrabuhu haram, wa ghudhiya bil haram. But despite his condition being favorable for his dua to be accepted, yet his food is haram, his drink is haram, fa'anna yustajabu li dhalika. How can Allah accept his dua. So we have to be very particular that we don't contaminate our system. It was renowned in one area that any tyrant that came there, there were a group of people who were mustajabu da'wat 
and they would make badwa and he would be removed. So when he became in charge of that area, he gave those people a da'wat. And after the meal, he said, now you will see what will happen in whatever dua you want to make, you can make it, it will not work. They were surprised. He said, the food I fed you was haram. The da'wat I had given you now was specifically engineered to trap you so that your dua will no longer be accepted. So we have to be very particular not only about our food only, but our means of sustenance and where we acquire it. Number two, al-isti'ijal, that a person hurries and is waiting for his dua to be accepted and he stops making dua. Yustajabu li ahdikum, that uh, Nabi Ali explained, your duas will be accepted as long as you are not haste. There's no haste and hurry and rush. فَيَقُولُ قَدْ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِبْ لِي You'll say, you know what, I made dua and I made dua and my dua was not accepted. If you feel your dua was not accepted, that it won't be accepted. Number three, اِرْتِكَابُ maasi. A person perpetrates sin and guna. Through this guna, a person's dua does not become accepted. Certain types of sin, even a person's iman leaves him. A person's iman leaves him. So, ulama have given different examples. One of them is where a person commits zina adultery. So, when a person is committing adultery, then his iman leaves him. And thus, the haq has mentioned that a person fulfills his shahwat desires and he says, Rabbi ghfilli. Allah forgive me, I committed a zina. So Allah SWT says, Tahawwal anha. If you are saying, you don't want to commit zina, adultery, you don't have any illicit relationships. And nowadays illicit relationships starts by the swipe of the hand, and by the text, and by the WhatsApp, and by that Facebook, and by these mediums, where it's an initiation. But the end result is, when a person does that swipe, he must remember it may be a swipe, we shall t take him till the end of his life. To get out will be difficult. So we shouldn't open those doors. So let's say, I will forgive you. But as long as you continue going back and back, La aghfiru laka. And this person is obstinate and is not ready to make tawbah sincerely. Because if a person is insincere, then he will try and make all effort to abstain from that guna and abstain from that sin and stay far. Number four, tarkul wajibat, to leave certain commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will bring the wrath and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alma have given many examples among them is Tarq al Amru bil Maruf and Nahi and al Munkar. That leaving and joining good and forbidding evil. So it's Aisha radiallahu's narration that Nabi alayhi salam once ended, and I uh, recognize on his face that something serious had happened. For Araf to fi wajhi and qad hadar oh shay. Fatawadda wa ma kalam ahadan. He made wudu, he never spoke to anybody. Thumma kharaja. He went into the masjid. Fakaada ala al mimbar. He mounted the mimbar. He said the khutbah. And then he said, Ya ayyuhin nas, inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala yaqul. O oh people, Allah is saying, Muru bil ma'ruf, enjoin good. Wanhaw ani al munkar. Abstain and forbid and stop people from evil. قَبْلَ أَن تَدْعُونِي فَلَا أُجِيبَ لَكُمْ You will make dua and your duas will not be accepted. وَتَسْأَلُونِي And you will ask me فَلَا أُعْثِيَكُمْ I will not grant you. وَتَسْتَنْسِرُونِي فَلَا أَنْسُرَكُمْ And you will seek my help and I will not help you. So it can be two or three million people in front of the Baytullah, what the awliya, what the ulama, 
with the mashayikh, with people in tears, and they would be asking in front of the Baytullah on the night of Laylatul Qadr, in front of the Hajr Aswad, all the conditions, and they will make dua for the betterment of this Ummah, but the next morning conditions will be worse. So by leaving this effort of da'wat, inviting towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoining good and forbidding evil, du'as will not be accepted. Number five, ad-du'a bi-ithmin o qati'ati rahmin. The person makes du'a for a evil, for a wrong, for a sin, for breaking ties. So a person should abstain from making any du'a that is detrimental to his dunya and akhirat. Then number six, this dua should not be done at a time where he is breaking the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, it's the time of salat and you should be in the masjid with the jama'ah. That is a command of Allah on the day of Jummah while the khutbah is on and a person is outside the masjid somewhere else. So he should have been in the masjid. At that time, whatever dua he makes, illa masha Allah, Allah knows best, but we're going on the asbab and we're following the guidance of Allah and His Rasul. Then that person's dua will not be accepted. Imam Shuqani say that amongst the important, most important usuls and adab for dua is ikhlas. Ikhlas, number seven, ikhlas. Why? Because acceptance of dua, the primary focus and the primary condition for acceptance of dua is ikhlas. Fad'ullah mukhlisina lahu deen. So whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without ikhlas, the dua will not be accepted. Number eight, وَاتَّبِعُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ Following the lifestyle of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes our du'as more compliant, more closest to acceptance. Number nine, الثِّقَةُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَقِينَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ That to turn our attention and focus to Allah. And number ten, هُذُورُ الْقَلْبِ That the heart should be present when we make dua, among the adab of dua ulama have listed many adab, and that's why we need to go to ulama, we need to go to the mashayikh, we need to sit in the company of the friends of Allah. Somebody wants his car serviced, he goes to the place where they service cars. He cannot say, come to my house. Why? Because they've got the equipment, they've got the technology, they've got the tools, they've got the technicians. So go to the people who specialize in Allah. Somebody want kebab also. They go to the kebab wala. You want to find Allah, go to the Allah wala. We need to realize our life in this world is short and we have a limited amount of time to maximize on akhirat. So I have listed the adab of dua is number one when a person makes dua al iqraru bil dhamb wal i'tarafu bil khati'ah. A person must acknowledge their gunas and acknowledge the sins and acknowledge their flaws. That's why one of the ad'iya sayyidul istighfar, Allahumma anta rabbi. Then a person goes and he accepts that I have committed the guna when he makes this istighfar of acknowledgement of his flaws. Ya Allah, I am full of flaws and you are flawless. Man arafa nafsa faqad arafa rabba. If you recognize how much you are filled of flaws and deficiencies, you will realize how great Allah Jalla Jalalu is. Whoever says this, in the day with yaqeen famata min yawmihi and he passes away fa huwa min ahli al-jannah is a jannati 
So Nabi alayhi salam has taught us this dua, divided in Bukhari and Nasa'i. But the adab of dua, so number one, acknowledgement. Number two, when you go to somebody great and you have a need, then you bring with them a gift. Taqdeemul amal, to give Allah some good action. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَنْصَبْ That dua is backed by amal. Just why Salatul Haja will need a salah before the dua. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They should strive for good actions and then وَيَدْعُونَنَا Then they made dua and ask Allah. So it is necessary to back our ad'iya through amal, the greater the amal, the greater the chance of qabuliya. Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb. Whoever has any animosity who harms my friend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadith ayakul says, I declare war with this person. And they continue to become close to me. Hatta uhibbahu. Until I love him. And then, وَإِن سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ This person, by doing amal and nawafil, reaches a stage that when he asks me, I will grant him. وَلَإِنِ اسْتَعَاذَ بِي لَعِذَنَّهُ And if he needs anything, I will fulfill his needs. So Ulema explain that we need to back our dua by amal. There were three people traveling and they got trapped in a cave. Each one used his amal as a wasila for salvation. After the three made dua, the entire boulder was removed. So through amal, through obedience, whether it's salat, whether it's even sadaqah. So any special amal that we did, one is a special amal to get something done. One is generally, we should be given sadaqah and charity. And see, we don't know which action we had done that will be a means for our dua to be accepted. So, a person even making tilawat of Quran, Nabi alayhi salam has said, Man qara al Quran, fal yas'al, then he should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this tilawat. So when we read in Salat, we make in Tilawat. Before that, we can be making pure Tilawat of Quran. فَإِنَّهُ سَيَجِي أَقْوَامٌ يَقْرَأُونَ الْقُرْآنِ A time will come where people will read Quran and recite Quran, but the objective and priority of reciting Quran will be to benefit from the Quran. And they will ask people and they will take worldly benefit through Quran. Whereas Qur'an is for our benefit in Akhirat. So let us do our mal and let us see. Allah give us tawfiq of understanding, practicing, preaching and realizing the reality. The amal for today is that silence, the reward of being silent. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ Whoever brings Iman in Allah and His Rasul should say good, speak good words, or keep silent. Sahabi came, Ya Rasul Allah, أَيُّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَفْضَلْ Which believer is the best? مَنْ سَلِمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ Whoever the people of Iman are protected from his hands and tongue. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ